Hello, and welcome to worship at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church. Please join me in the call to worship, opening hymn, and opening prayer. Let us worship the one who calls us. Here we are, ready or not, called by the one who lived and died and rose to live again among us. Here we are, ready or not, bringing our everyday selves to praise and to pray, to know the Holy One in the midst of our lives. Let us worship the one who calls us. Let us now pray together. Beckoning God, in the stillness of the night, you called Samuel into your service. Call us into service with a voice we are able to hear and give us hearts to come when we are called. Amen. Hello. I want to gather the children together to tell you a story that comes from our Bible. I love this story because it is one of the stories in our Bible that talks about how God speaks to and interacts with kids. The story begins with a woman whose name was Hannah. Now, Hannah loved her husband very much, but she also really wanted to have a child. And so one day, Hannah went to the temple, and she knelt down and prayed. She prayed to God, saying that if she was able to become pregnant and have a child, she promised that she would dedicate that child to serving God. Now, in the temple was a priest named Eli, and he was hidden behind a curtain. He heard Hannah's prayer, and he stepped out, and he blessed Hannah. Well, God did hear Hannah's prayer, and she became pregnant and had a son whom she named Samuel. And she and her husband loved Samuel very, very much. Well, when Samuel became a little bit older, Hannah and her husband remembered the promise that Hannah had made in the temple. And so she and her husband took Samuel, still a young boy, to the temple where she presented him 
to Eli, the priest, who was now becoming a little bit older. Eli was going to guide and mentor Samuel so that he could learn how to become a servant to God. Now, while Samuel became a little bit older but was still a boy, he laid down one night in bed and he heard a voice calling to him saying, Samuel, Samuel. Well, Samuel got up out of bed and he went to the room where Eli was sleeping. And he went in and he said, I am here. Did you call me? Well, Eli woke up from his sleep and said, no, I did not call you. Samuel, go back to bed. And that's what Samuel did. He went back to bed. And yet for a second time, he heard a voice saying, Samuel, Samuel. So Samuel went back to Eli again and said, here I am. Did you call me? Well, again, Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Please go back and lie down again. Well, for a third time, Samuel heard a voice calling his name, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And so, once again, Samuel went back to Eli and said, Here I am. Did you call me? Well, at this point, Eli realized that it was not he who was calling Samuel. But can you guess who it was? If you guess God, you are right. Eli said to Samuel, now go back to bed. But if you hear this voice again, say these words. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. Well, sure enough, Samuel heard a voice for the fourth time saying to him, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel this time said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God told Samuel that he had a plan for his life, that he wanted Samuel to become a leader in God's people. He wanted Samuel to become what's known as a prophet, a person who would speak on behalf of God to God's people that Samuel would tell people when they did something right or what they should do, and that Samuel would also tell God's people when they did something wrong and that they had to change their ways in order to not be punished. You see, God speaks to people of all ages and all backgrounds. God speaks to children. God speaks to children in ways that will guide them and help them do what God wants them to do. Now, children won't always hear God speaking to them like Samuel did, with a very clear voice saying their names. But each of you will hear God's call in your life, whether it be hearing your name called like Samuel did, or maybe a teacher or your Sunday school teacher telling you that God is guiding you. I see God working in your life. Or maybe it will be a parent of a friend of yours or someone else who said, you are really good at that. God is calling you to use that gift in God's service. But for each of us, as kids, as adults, we need to listen carefully to pick up when God calls us. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we bow our heads before you, thankful that you call each of us to serve you. Dear God, help us to listen carefully for your voice so that we might hear you when you call, that you will guide us in what you would want us to do, to serve you, and to love and help others in all that we do. Thank you for calling Samuel into your service, and thank you for calling us as well. 
We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breast. Thy sweeter for thy face to see. A reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. Listen for the word of God. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came out and stood there, calling as before. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it 
tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the inequity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the inequity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said. Here I am, Eli said. What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is a familiar story. It is known as the call of Samuel. In it, God reveals to Samuel that the day of judgment has arrived for Eli's family. Eli was the priest under whom young Samuel served. Because Eli could not control the wickedness of his two sons, God's judgment would fall like an ax on Eli's house. But why would God tell this to Samuel? God's call to Samuel was not to enlist him into the ministry. Samuel was Eli's helper, not an understudy. The only reason Samuel was at the tent shrine where Eli was the priest, these were in the days before the temple was built, was because his mother had dedicated him to God as an act of thanksgiving for his birth. At the time of his call, Samuel was only 12. So why does God call Samuel? Perhaps it is simply because Samuel notices when God calls him by name. When God calls him, Samuel immediately says, Here I am. But although he hears God's voice, he does not know to whom it belongs. He runs to Eli, thinking it was he that called. After this happens three times, it dawns on Eli that the call is coming from God. Eli instructs Samuel, go, lie down, and when you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel does this, God reveals to him the fate of the house of Eli. Interestingly, there is nothing in this calling for Samuel to do other than receive the message. God does not tell Samuel, you are to take Eli's place, or even you are to give him the message. Eli has to drag it out of him. But when he does, 
Samuel is able to repeat God's message word for word. Perhaps it is by design that God delivers such a decisive message to a 12-year-old. Say what you will about young people these days, but some are finely tuned to God's will. If you go to any protest or demonstration these days, you will be struck by how young people make up the majority of the crowd. When Greta Thunberg, the Swedish environmental activist, was 11 years old, she became so depressed about climate change that she stopped talking and eating. When she was 15, she was spending her school days outside the Swedish parliament demanding that it take stronger action on this critical issue. Many young people are attuned to the voice of God. Older people, as well, can be on the receiving end of God's call. Eli, as dim as his eyesight was getting, was able to see God was trying to get a hold of Samuel and used his experience to help Samuel take the call. When I was a young adult attending Centenary United Methodist Church, the Reverend Peter Chen helped me in a similar way. He perceived God was calling me into some form of ministry and pointed me in the direction of some options to explore. God does not bypass older persons. In a recent op-ed in the LA Times, Akaya Windwood and Bill McKibben challenged older persons to use their wisdom, experience, and wealth to push this country in a better direction. Baby boomers and members of the silent generation participated or bore witness to profound political and cultural shifts for the better. The civil rights movement, the drive for women's equality, and anti-war campaigns. Winwood and McKibben wrote, the leadership for progressive action comes mostly from the young, from Black Lives Matter to the Sunrise Movement. But older people, too, can be catalysts for deep change. It's not fair to ask the young to save the world themselves, nor is it possible. God has a role for older people to play. You may be asking, so how do we receive a call from God? How do we even recognize when a, such a call comes to us? It is not as if your cell phone rings and the caller ID displays the word God. In the Bible, God communicates with people in a variety of ways, through dreams, visions, disasters, wars, angels, prophets, just to name a few. I have learned to listen to God's voice through my heart. When my heart is moved or even broken by something I've seen or heard, I sense it is God saying to me, pay attention. We can also sensitize our spiritual antennae by immersing ourselves in the scriptures and through prayer. By such means, we can learn to pick out God's voice among all competing voices 
the way a child can single out their mother's voice in a crowd. God's call usually requires a response. When Samuel received God's message, he didn't know what to do with it. So at first, he kept it to himself. But as a result of Eli's prompting, Samuel spoke out loud what he had heard, word for word, even though it was against the very person who demanded to hear it. Eli accepts God's word, saying, It is the Lord. Let God do what seems good to God. Samuel learns from this, and as he grows up, God continues to speak to him, and Samuel lets none of God's words fall to the ground. In other words, to go to waste. God calls us for a purpose to involve us in advancing God's reign. Perhaps God is trying to reach you now, perhaps to mentor a young person, or to help someone who is struggling, or apply pressure on a leader to do the right thing. When we take the call and respond, God will use us to further God's ongoing activity of creation. Will you take the call? Let us pray. Creator God, who is always at work perfecting your creation, Forgive us for the times we have not taken your call, times when we were too busy or distracted or uncaring. We also think your call is meant for others, but we let it ring and ring and ring. We also confess that at times we are afraid to respond to your calling, thinking you may demand from us more than we are willing to give. Forgive us, we pray, and help us to accept our role in your ongoing work of creation. We thank you for your trust in us, for reserving a role for us to play. We thank you for knowing us by name and for giving us gifts and graces to use for your good purposes. We thank you for your patience with us as we figure out the role you wish us to play. We pray for others in their need, be with those who are sick, that they may know the power of your healing grace. Be with those who are lonely, that they will not fall into despair. Be with those who have lost loved ones, that they may find peace. Be with those who lead, that they will work for the good of the people they serve. We praise you as the Creator God, who has called all things good. We praise you for your great purpose, to which you are leading your creation. We praise you for involving us in your creation, trusting us to move your reign forward. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue in prayer by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Please plan to join us again next week for a special worship service provided by the Peace and Justice Ministries of our annual conference. Go now in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.